Hello, everybody, and welcome to Schwab Coaching. Our next topic is our virtual workshop on transitioning from Street Smart Edge to Thinkorswim. I'm one of your hosts, Lee Bowl, and I'm joined today by our co host, Mike Fairborn. We'll tell you a little bit about ourselves in just a moment. But hey, Mike. Hey, Lee. Great to be with you tonight. Yep. So we shall get going here in just a second. So our goal here is to just go over how a person using Street Smart Edge might transition over to think or swim. And for the purposes of this webcast, I'm going to play a Street Smart Edge user that's not too familiar with Thinkorswim, and I'm going to be asking Mike questions from Thinkers uh, from Street Smart Edge to show me how to do things on Thinkorswim. So that's how uh, this is going to be set up. We are joined today by one of our fellow coaches, a very knowledgeable investor, Ben Watson. He will be answering your questions that you chat through in there. Just a, a quick note on that. We are going to be primarily presenting here, and Ben will be doing a lot of the questions that you have. If there, though, is something that you need demonstrated, then obviously we will do that in the 30-minute Q&A session, which is at the end of our hour presentation. So we'll be able to demonstrate answers to your question then, because otherwise we'd be going back and forth from our presenting and answering the question, and it might be a little bit um, jumbled. So that, that's what we plan to do with that. So let's start. Here are pictures of us, our host. The primary thing here is Mike has been at Ameritrade for over 15 years. Just tell us a little bit about yourself real quick, Mike. Yeah, we, you know, I did start 15 years ago and really started uh, initially off in uh, the department or areas of financial, the financial end in terms of accounting and finance, kind of moved and gravitated towards my key interest, which was in trading and investing. Uh, I do live in a suburb uh, about 20 minutes south of Salt Lake, and just about 15 minutes to my east here uh, direction, I've got a couple of ski resorts, if anybody's been here, uh, Alta and Snowbird. But it doesn't quite compare to the beach that you go to, Lee. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you about myself just a little bit. I've been at Schwab for 32 years, um, so I do have some familiarity with Street Smart Edge. As a matter of fact, I've done all the transition videos from when we went from, if you're an old Schwab client, maybe you know 25 years ago we had Velocity. I did the Velocity to Street Smart Pro transition. And now, then I did the Street Smart Pro to Street Smart Edge transition. And now we're doing Street Smart Edge to Think or Swim. So that is a little bit about uh, us. I'm a also a chartered market technician, so uh, it'll be fun demonstrating some of the more advanced technical analysis features on Thinkorswim as we go forward, maybe not in today's session, but we're going to go over what's going to be in each session in just a moment. Uh, before we can get to all that good stuff, though, as usual, we do have some disclosures, so uh, we will be covering options, at least how to trade them. Uh, options do have a high level of risk. They're not suitable for all investors. Also, multiple leg strategies involve multiple commissions. Also, if you have an in-the-money option prior to expiration, you could get exercised at any time. We do suggest that you read the characteristics and risks of standardized option. Also, the information we're going over today should be considered as educational in nature, should not be considered at all individual recommendations. We will be using stock symbols, obviously, to show you how the platform works, but the ones that we choose or the ones that we scan for are not recommendations. Do keep that in mind. We're also pleased to demonstrate the paper money software application. That's the side of Thinkorswim we will be using today. But keep in mind that trading in paper money does not always translate to real life trading as market conditions can change. Also, for the sake of simplicity in today's examples, we will not include the effect of commissions or taxes. Uh, or margin requirements or margin interest in these strategies. Also, we all know that investing does involve risks, including loss of principal. And finally, past performance is never a guarantee of future success. Okay, so there are three platforms that are in the Thinkorswim 
Sweet. And Mike's just going to talk about them for just a couple of minutes, and then we'll go over uh, what days we are doing what. But we do need to know the general lay of the land. So, Mike, just tell us really quickly about the three platforms. Sure. Lee. You know, uh, initially, looking at the desktop platform, as it states there, the desktop platform is a software-based platform. So it really has all the capabilities of a software program. That's where you're going to get really an in-depth sort of level of information for each area you're looking at, uh, specifically as it relates to you know technical analysis options, et cetera. So a lot of great details there. Uh, we're going to spend some time on that discussion uh, this evening, really diving into more details on the desktop platform tomorrow night in much more detail. Uh, but, okay, so that is the key desktop platform where we're really getting all that additional capability. Okay, now the web itself is different. The web is an actual login. It's a website you can go to, uh, thinkorswim web. And uh, we'll get into that on the third night, uh, but it really does cover the core basics that a trader and an investor would want for trading specifically or investing. So it's got a much more uh, limited scope of what you would look at you know, in terms of or what a trader investor would want to find quickly. Now, it's not software. It could be accessed, let's say, if you are on vacation somewhere. Uh, you don't have the ability to download software on a platform, but you just want to quickly look at a company, see important details on a chart, and, and quickly place a trade. You could do that through Thinkorswim Web. So that'll be the third night. Along with that, on the third night, is the mobile. Exactly. So mobile itself is has even fewer features, but it does have that great capability of being able to be accessed through an online device like an iPad. We'll show you know, certainly an iPad example on uh, the third night that would be or the third day uh, Wednesday. So we'll look at that with Thinkorswim Web. There's just less to review there, but it but that application it is software based. It's very accessible anywhere you might be. Uh, you know, as long as you have, let's say, for an example, an internet connection. So that's kind of a summary, Lee, of the three that we'll be going into. All right. So here's our workshop agenda specifically for our three days. Today, we're going to go over setting up and navigating Thinkorswim desktop, just to give you kind of the, the lay of the land and some key basic features. Tomorrow, as Mike said, we're going to go in depth into Thinkorswim covering, as we'll see, there's tabs on Thinkorswim. We're going to cover the monitor tab, the trade tab, charts. We'll do more advanced trading, you know, option spreads and all of that. We'll go over how to do that type of trading on session two. And as Mike said, on session three, we will cover the, the web platform and we'll also cover Thinkorswim mobile. All right, so today we're going to start with setting up and navigating Thinkorswim desktop. So the goals for this session are we're going to show you how to actually find Thinkorswim, how to download it, and then how to customize it and go over some of the basic features. We're going to be going back and forth between Street Smart Edge and Thinkorswim so we can show you some features that are analogous. They're not exactly the same, obviously, uh, but that is our goal. Now, before we even do that, what I really want to do is say, why why are we doing this? Why are we making a transition? That's that's what you probably you want to know. You're having to go through this change in platforms. And what was the reason that Schwab actually decided to go in this direction? I think that's a fair question. And I'll try to answer it as best as I can. So Street Smart Edge was our, you know, main trading platform. Uh, it has a great history. I've used it for years and years. As I said, I've been doing these transition webcasts uh, for decades. All right. But keep in mind that Street Smart Edge, you can't trade futures on it. You can't do Forex on it. Uh, and we wanted to have a basis for where we could do that going in the future. Also, remember, our futures trading platform used to be uh, Street Smart Central. And Street Smart Central was developed differently from Street Smart Edge, and they were both created differently from the Schwab mobile platform. So uh, they're kind of siloed. So think about that versus the Thinkorswim suite. It's fully integrated, right? You, there's no need to maintain separate 
orders or anything like that. You have all the functions available to you and they were jointly developed so they talk to each other back and forth. So that is a big advantage over the Street Smart platforms. Um, and as I said, Street Smart Central and mobile were the only ways you could trade futures. You couldn't trade Forex at all. And today we're going to see that uh, on the TOS platforms, you will be able to have a futures account and trade Forex all on one platform. So that is really powerful going forward as we roll out additional capabilities. Another thing, um, if you are a uh, Apple Macintosh user and you've been using Street Smart Edge, you know it's not exactly that seamless. You have to download uh, a Citrix plugin, uh, and it does not run natively on the different operating systems. Whereas on Thinkorswim, it runs natively on the Mac operating system. It runs on Windows, it runs on Linux, and you can access it without having to do any additional downloading or any software. Um, also, one of the main reasons, and I've heard this for years, yes, on Street Smart Edge, as you know, there is a demo mode where you can play around with some of the functionality, but it doesn't carry forward your cost basis. It doesn't actually work other than in one session, like a real trading platform. It does allow you to play around with the, with the features. Whereas we're gonna see here on Thinkorswim, one of the main benefits is the paper money part of it, where you can actually do uh, simulated trading, carry for your cost basis, see how you're doing, try out different strategies. So that is a huge reason why we are also moving to Thinkorswim. And finally, um, if you are uh, an old Street Smart Pro user, you might have known that there was, a, a, I will say it, I'll admit it, kind of weak backtesting platform on that. Street Smart Edge does not have any backtesting. However, what we have is on Thinkorswim, we have two ways. One, you can go back at any time over a couple of months in a simulated format and see what might have happened. And so you could you know, do a simulated trade at that time and see how it played out. Also on Thinkorswim, there is also a strategy backtesting uh, module as well, which we uh, will probably go into in, in the second day. So there, that was the main reasons, all of those, why we decided to move from Street Smart Edge to Thinkorswim. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of uh, background on that. We know changing platforms is hard and we appreciate that. So believe me, that's why we're doing webcasts like this, hopefully to make it a little bit easier for you. All right, so the first thing we need to do then is go and figure out how to get the platform if you don't know. So here we are on Schwab.com. This is a, a demo account, but your account will look just like this, okay? Um, and what we're going to do is go to trade and we are going to go to trading platforms. OK, and. We're going to scroll down here. And if you are going to go to sink or swim, you do have to enable your account. So you would go in here to enable one of the accounts. But what we really want to do is how to get it. And here it is, Thinkorswim Desktop. You download Thinkorswim Desktop right here. All right, so I've already downloaded it. And what we're gonna do now is figure out how to launch it. All right, so I'm gonna go to my desktop here. We'll go to, this is Street Smart Edge. You'll get an icon on your desktop. It'll be down here. It'll be green and it'll launch Thinkorswim and the sign in page will look like this. I'm going to bring it over for my other monitor and here we go. Now, before we even sign in, I've been working with Mike to make this as useful as possible. And obviously he knows a lot more about Thinkorswim than I do. And he said there's customizations we can do even on this login screen. Michael, walk me through that and, and what can I do? 
Absolutely, Lee. Yeah, because it is software. We can set it up initially and have it remember our settings going forward. So there is a settings button exactly right in the bottom left hand corner there, the little wheel. If we click on that wheel, uh, we can go in and initially there are some changes up top too. I mean, there's uh, first of all, some people may not be on uh, Schwab yet. So there's a TD Ameritrade login too. If you're still there, I think a number of accounts are coming over in May, but you've got that functionality there. Uh, you can also do a color scheme as well, just big picture color scheme with the next section down. Exactly, black or white, whichever we prefer there. Uh, down towards the bottom as well, we do have a memory gauge. And so, and so talking to some of the software developers initially with Thinkorswim, they told me that the platform itself does have a requirement. And if you can set this at uh, initially, Lee, if you, if you click that drop down there, uh, we can go to the 60... 144, let's see, we have that, I'm sorry, it's the 64, I'm sorry, the next one is 6144, yeah. you do it one time, and you don't ever have to go back again, and I haven't gone back, but uh, and then to the right of that, I believe it's the 6144, yeah, there we go, so if you set this here, and then just click save, it will always remember this login or that amount of memory to, to keep on the side, to keep the platform going. You should never have any issues with it asking for uh, a requirement of more memory. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right, so now I am going to log in. So you need, uh, it's the same, if you're using it on a Schwab account, it would be the, the same login you would use on your Schwab account. Here, uh, we have a demo account, so the, the user ID is going to be a little bit uh, long, but I'm going to put it in there. Okay, and then I'm going to continue. And then we put in our password. And then we click log in. And it's going to pull up here. And I'm going to pull it over for my other screen so we can take a look at it. Yeah, but is that is that logging up there, Lee? It, it basically just uh, is loading up not just the software uh, for the platform, but your last settings as well, which we could talk about later. But yeah. OK, so. A couple of things uh, before we even start the, the big picture here. Uh, let's go back to uh, Street Smart Edge. And I want to show you just a couple of things that uh, some people didn't think was that obvious. So, as you know, on Street Smart Edge, you access all your accounts in a drop down, right? You do the same thing on Thinkorswim, except it's up here. All right, so if you have different accounts, you can, this is how you choose the account you're, you're going to deal with, all right, and, and drop down here. We'll also see when we do a trade that you can actually have sub accounts within a regular account to break down, you know, maybe different stocks that you had different strategies with, or, you know, you have an options portion of your account. We'll go over that uh, in a little bit more detail later. But the, that was the first thing I wanted to show you is where the account drop down is. I've had questions on that. The second thing, I want to go back to Street Smart Edge again. And the next thing I want to point out is, as you know, on Street Smart Edge, you have these tabs, right, across the top where you can basically set up different customized layouts. And, you know, you, you add your launch tools here in a layout, and then, you know, you add a chart or whatever, and then you save this as a layout. Well, there aren't layout tabs like this per se on Thinkorswim. However, if we go back to Thinkorswim, you can, though, customize these tabs that we're going to go through, and Mike goes over the, the big... Um, review of all this, but I just wanted to say that you can set up, you know, your charts different ways. You could maybe set up your, um, you know, your monitor just a little bit different way, and then you can save it here as a workspace. So these are almost, they're not identical, 
to the the tabs that you can put up to eight on Street Smart Edge. You can have much more than eight setups here, though. As you can see, I I have plenty of them. But now that we're here and I've showed you that, there's some things in this setup and application settings that uh, Mike, maybe you want to show them. So how to customize the look and feel and all of that. So so just walk me through it. Assume I know nothing, which is often not a bad assumption. <laughs> no, you're a quick learner. I know that for sure. Uh, First-hand experience there. But uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, upper left-hand corner, Lee, is one of the key sections. One of the key sections of the platform is really that upper row. <laughs> There's a lot of good information on that upper row as well. Uh, mm -hmm. And we can hit some of that uh, next week. Uh, excuse me, tomorrow we'll hit that. But um, yeah, the setup button up top and uh, for a PC format. Now, if you are on a Mac, as you'd mentioned, Lee, there's no issues loading it up on a Mac. It just sets up a little bit higher on the screen. It'd be the very top bar on a Mac. It'll say setup as well. So there we go. If we click on setup there, uh, very first item we click on, this is the first line item, exactly, application settings. If we click on that right there, you can see it does give us a list of tabs here, Lee, to take a look at here. Now, the general tab, a lot of good information in here. And under the general tab, we're basically getting a lot of the defaults for the platform itself. In fact, if you go down lane and just look at a few of these, like for example, yeah, exactly, orders or positions would be a good one to take a look at. It will state like what the platform is defaulted to show on the, uh, the platform itself when you sign into it. And those can be adjusted if you wanted to tailor those, which is a really nice feature. You can tailor some of these kind of imprinted uh, sections within, let's say, for example, the position statement or the trade tab, things along those lines. So these are really good to investigate in case you want to change any of those. Now, if we scroll on down, I want you to go just to startup first, which uh, is about four down. Yeah, exactly. Startup. Uh, this is interesting too and important because as we've mentioned, the, the platform, the software can load up the previous uh, set of information that you've had in place. The show screen on or screen show on startup. If you set that to last used, this is going to be one that I think it works for a lot of people because it's going to show whatever they had last up on their screen, as opposed to just going to the home page and forgetting whatever you were on. The home page I really haven't used it much, maybe a couple times in you know 15 years. It's just not a lot that I personally use. Now other people might use it, but that might be a common selection. Uh, and now getting to the look and feel there, Lee, just below that startup exactly. So additional information here and ad additional adjustments that can be made to the platform. We did see some of those adjustments that, that could be made on the initial prompt, and that was the color scheme. You can see that again up top in case, you know, once you've already signed into the platform, there's actually more selections here. But now that you've signed into the software, there's other things that we can do while we're in it. Uh, we could select any of those, and you can see that there is one at the bottom that's new, which is the Street Smart Edge Light, which could be useful for those that did want or that had, you know, liked how the the background looked on Street Smart Edge. That is there, and you, of course, you get that preview down in that bottom corner exactly. Uh, the font size is different. I noticed that you've got the font size, Lee, in the next section, exactly a little bit larger, which is good for our presenting. And sometimes people just want larger font sizes. And there, there's a look at those right there. Just so you can see the screen a little bit better is what that does for you there. And uh, again, each of these, once you save them, they're going to be saved as a default. Line spacing, and you've got other menu options that you can take a look at as well that are right there. So... Yeah. Def definitely be familiar with the general section. You can see there's display calculations and language on the left-hand side as well there, Lee, to finish off the general tab. Just to the right of uh, the general tab, if we go back to the upper section of those tabs, there's notifications. This is what's used for alerts that we'll get into much more detail on tomorrow as we look at charts. Uh, where alerts can be sent out via email or text messages, a very, very useful tool on the platform, and you just submit the information there. Um, to the right of that tab up top, there are order defaults. And there are defaults that are set within the platform itself. Uh, and you can see those for, on the left-hand side, you can go stocks, options, futures on down the line there. But important to know, what those orders will be populating as as you go through and click on each one of them. 
And so just changes, like for example, if we click on options there, yeah, you got it. It used to be actually that those defaults were like uh, 10 <laughs> and that might be kind of high for a lot of people, you know, or uh, yeah. So just be mindful of that. And a lot of times people would have something like what you've got, Lee, one or two or something like that. Those can always be adjusted, but when you put an order in, that's what would show as a default there, Lee. Okay, then you can do the same thing with uh, with how many futures contracts, how many futures options, and and forex as Precisely. well. Yep. Right now, remember on Street Smart Edge, uh, you could you could have uh, done that as as well. I'm going to go back to my um, you know, th there's the settings on Street Smart Edge allows you to do order defaults and, and all of those things as well. So we're just showing you where that is on uh, Thinkorswim. All right, so that is kind of the, the look and feel. Now, we, we talked about a couple of things. We talked about workspaces being kind of analogous to the tabs. Um, Mike just showed us how to do the color scheme. And what we're gonna do now is before I go back to Street Smart Edge and we, go, and we look at some of the features there and where they are on Thinkorswim, I just want Michael to give us uh, a basic navigation if you haven't opened Thinkorswim before, just talk a little bit about the, the basic navigation and then we'll do it in much more detail. Sounds good, Lee. And uh, as I mentioned before, it's kind of broken down into three key areas. One of the first areas, and we just kind of looked at one section of that was the setup. That upper row there, Lee, is very interesting. It can be helpful, especially if you're getting started. Yeah, I mean, you know, the far left-hand side, it just, it, you know, it shows we're connected. It says we've got real-time data. You've mentioned where the accounts are. Very helpful there. Uh, one thing that the platform doesn't go into great detail on is fundamentals, and that's something that Schwab.com has right there available to us, just to the right of our accounts. We can click on that. It will immediately pull up um, a browser window there to get into Schwab.com quickly. Uh, to the right of that, you know, you've got home screen, you've got messages, and messages are really important because, you know, anytime you got a fill or you want to see what that fill came in at, you can find that in the message center. It would be one of the messages that would come through. Support, an excellent tab in there. If you click on support, you can you can chat with live support. They do have the capability to come on your individual screen if you're running into an issue, but you would just open up a ticket to do so. Uh, and that's not uh, 24 hours a day, but it's it's a pretty good uh, range of time. As you can see, it's got the schedule down there, and they, they are they have been very quick as I've used them recently. Uh, that can vary though in terms of uh, time that they're available, but they're generally quite quick. There we go. To the right of that is uh, there are chat rooms, and then it gets us to setup. Now, Lee, that was just one of kind of the main things we can do with the platform. The other key thing is is really the notice the platform itself is divided kind of in half as well. You've got the left hand sidebar exactly. So we're gonna go over in a second. Exactly. With some other functions, right? Yep, and it's also referred to as the gadget window. There is a little arrow there too. You can see some cool features that Lee's got up. We'll go through those. But there's a little arrow just to the uh, little barrier, uh, I should say, just to the left of that uh, window. Um, if you can see that little arrow there, Lee, it's right in the middle before you get into the charts uh, to the right. Exact. Oh, just about a little bit more to the left uh, and down a little bit now. There's an arrow there you can click on to. Yes. Shut that down. Yep, exactly. To make a full screen if you click on that. And that just kind of highlights the, the last portion or the third part, you could say, of the platform if you're breaking it into threes. That third part is noted just for some key tabs up top. So you've got the monitor tab, trade tab on down the line there. And within each of those tabs are sub tabs that can be clicked on as well that are very, very helpful to get into. Um, Lee, I know we're gonna be going into much more detail uh, right. tomorrow on that. We'll even hit a little bit more of that uh, today as well, but uh, just wanted to uh, yeah, kind of get a, give, give us sort of a big picture perspective of how the platform is kind of broken down there. All right, let's go back to Street Smart Edge and start kind of going over a few things. So uh, the first thing is across the top, we had three symbols. Now, a lot of people like them at across the top here. This particular function is not available exactly on Thinkorswim. 
to get like three indices. But what you can do is go back to thinkorswim and let us basically take off this gadget. And why don't you show me how to do a watch list where we can put in those three symbols and it will always show over here kind of to make it similar to the three that are on the top of the platform on Street Smart Edge. So show me how to launch another watch list here. Absolutely. So uh, to launch another one, bottom left-hand corner of the screen, we just click on the plus sign right there, exactly. And that pulls up a whole selection of gadgets that we could choose. They're, they're in alphabetical order, so exactly right at the very bottom, we've got a watch list, and we can click on that and just sort of create a customized one that keeps those exact same quotes or uh, symbols uh, that it will always be there in a corner for us if we want, just like Street Smart Edge had. And so within that, what we can do is just to the right of the watch list uh, where it says, um, well, we can actually create one or we could type over right. it too. Uh, I believe that one might be a uh, public one. It's the S&P yeah. 100, if I'm not mistaken. But the okay, one we created- Let's create a new one. Yeah, so right at the bottom, the one that we added there under default, mm -hmm. yeah, where it says default there. Mm -hmm. We can actually just click on that and then select create watch list is the way that there I found it to be very quick. Exactly. We can name it. This is why I don't have to play dumb sometimes. Okay. Can't spell. That's perfect. All right. So so now we created it. Uh -huh. So we will save it. Yeah. If we can either, oh, let's see, is there already anyone named that? Maybe. Oh, yeah, I'll call, I'll call it indexes too. There you go. Okay, there we go. And then we can either, Lee, I was just going to say, we can click underneath the symbol there to create it or if we wanted to. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Start. Okay. So let's put in the, uh, the what we have on Street Smart uh, Edge. We have mm -hmm. S&P, we have the NASDAQ composite, the symbol on that one is COMP with a dollar sign. And then the Russell, if you want that one, is uh, R-U-T. R-U-T, right. okay, perfect. Okay, and we'll save that. And there we go. So now we can have that, that is very similar then to what we have up here and that will be showing when you have the left open. Now, the other thing I wanna do is since we're talking about watch lists is I'm gonna raise this up in a second. But the first thing I want to do before I do that is make sure that you know that there are platform transition tools up here. Okay. And there's a way you can get more information. There's guides on how to export import information. There's a whole transition guide here. There's a link to uh, our webcasts. So just make sure that you know this. Now, as long as we're here, what I'm going to show you is watch lists are a big deal, obviously. So let us go over how you would transfer your watch list. We'll just do it with one I have built here called Monday. How do you transfer that to uh, street smart uh, to think or swim. So let me show you how to do that. So we're going to raise this here. We're going to go to actions and notice there is an export for think or swim, right? So we're going to click on that. And now it's going to give me something that I'm going to save on my desktop so I can find it. All right. And it's called Monday TXT. So I'm going to save that. OK, so you saw what I did right now. What we have to do is we have to import this list so you don't have to type in all the symbols into Thinkorswim. Right. So I'm going to show you how to do that next. So we're going to go back over to Thinkorswim. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to what's called the Market Watch tab here. And. What we do here is first we create the watch list that we want it to come into. So we can just go up here and we say create watch list. We can create, uh, we created one the other way. This is a new way to create it, which you need to do if you're gonna import them. So I'm gonna pull over this from my other screen. All right, and we're gonna call this Monday over here because it's, we're, we're trying to make a corresponding watch list, okay? So we're just gonna call that Monday and then I'm gonna save it. 
And now what I'm going to do, we have Monday, and then I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to say import. Okay? And we're going to import that file. So I have to select that file. So I click select file. And it's opening up on my other screen, which I'm going to drag over here on the desktop. Monday TXT, right? I saved it. There's where it is. And I click open. And it's going to replace the current symbols. We well, don't have any in there. I could have wiped out the ones I had in there, or I could add it to a pre-existing list. I'm just going to click OK. And there we go. So there is the watch list. That's how you transfer watch lists. Now, let's go back to Street Smart Edge, also talking about watch lists. And I'm going to uh, put this back down. And remember, you would right click to set your columns and settings, right, on Street Smart Edge. Michael's going to show us. We're going to go back to the, to the gadget window, and we are going to do our watch list that we built with the, uh, let's do this one over here, the S&P 100. So show me how to customize those columns, or, is, or am I stuck with what's here? No, Lee, you've got uh, many, many more options. And by the way, just a quick side note, one thing I wanted to add to the watch list down below, what mm -hmm. you understand that Street Smart Edge doesn't have is futures. And so it's nice to sometimes be able to see what markets are doing pre-market or after hours mm -hmm. or even over the weekend. And those could be added into a watch list as well. So uh, clients can get a good sense of what's happening, broader market speaking as well, just as a side note. But, interesting. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. So going up to the point you made there, yeah, we can adjust. And there are a few different ways to do this. One way that's actually really quite easy to adjust the different columns, because there's a lot of additional information, as you brought up, that could be added in here. We could simply just right click, whether you're on a PC or a Mac, it wouldn't matter in one of the columns, like uh, net change or whatever the case might be up at the top. Exactly. We can right click there and then just select customize. You got it. And there's going to be a list of uh, options that we can customize there. Now, you can really knock yourself out because the list is so big. I mean, there's just right. so much going on there, right? <laughs> but right. Uh, there might be some interesting ones in there, and there's a net change. I mean, one that I've always found interesting is the very top one of the list there, Lee, is percent change. Give us kind of a relative performance depending upon, you know, whatever it is we're looking at. Uh, these can be uh, maneuvered, too, just by dragging and dropping or going move up or down. Yeah, you've got a couple of different ways to do that. Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's let's do that. And so this is how you would, would customize uh, everything. You can see one of the other reasons that we are moving to thinkorswim. I gave you the main reasons, but you'll see when we go over in much more detail when we do charting, uh, we're gonna do you know just basic charting today, but when you detail in charting that there are so many more studies and you can have studies show up as columns and you can do all sorts of things uh, with watch list columns that you can't do on Street Smart Edge. Uh, but for now, we'll just add the percent change just so we can move on here. And now we have the percent change in here. Now, Michael, if, if I wanted to kind of have this separate or maybe free floating, how would I do that, this watch list? Yeah, good point. Uh, there is just to the far right of where it says watch list, if you just follow along that arrow, kind of that hamburger type icon to the uh -huh. far right. Yes, there you go. It's particularly helpful if you have different monitors, but you could detach this gadget. There's a few things you could do, and then you could drag it over whatever you wanted, you know, wherever you wanted to on the screen if you didn't like make it. Make it big. Yeah, absolutely. Put on another cool monitor, sensor. right? So all yeah. those are detachable. Correct. And good. then to your point, as you full sized it, it gives you just much more flexibility to add additional columns as opposed to just the left hand sidebar. Right. All right. Uh, now, as long as we're still on the this side, I want to go back to Street Smart Edge. Hmm. And I want to go to um, account box. All right. And uh, this is a demo account, so there's nothing in it, but there's one thing that I have gotten lots of questions on, all right, and that's on Street Smart Edge, you have something here where you can go show balances, and it will show you uh, up here a lot of different things that will constantly update, and that's how people know how they're doing on the day and everything. I just wanted to show you on Thinkorswim, okay, 
if you want to know how you're doing on the day, well, we're going to talk about customizing this account window in a second. But I did want to show you on the monitor tab at the bottom of the whole thing, this is where you get how much you're up overall and how much you are up on the day. It's the last couple lines. It gives you the overall totals and it's in the monitor tab. So that's very similar, again, to the balances tab here if you want to get that really quickly. But having said all that, let's go back and uh, to thinkorswim and let's talk a little bit about the account detail window. We talked about it on, on Schwab, Thinker, uh, Street Smart Edge. Is this all I have access to? Is just these few things here on, on the account? Can you help me here do a little bit better with this? Surely. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, yeah, part of the left-hand sidebar, account information at the top, that same exact spot, exactly where you're clicking right there, the, that uh, icon, lay that hamburger icon, we can customize that gadget. There's just going to be a number of different other sorts of uh, sort of uh, details that we could add in if we want to that relate specifically to an account balance. And by the way, a, a huge list here as well. You can see there's just plenty in there with, with four <laughs> You know, a Forex trader, would be, uh, somebody that doesn't use Forex would never use, but like cash balances, cash and sweep. Uh, some of the main ones, I think, are the ones that you do have added. And those might be defaulted to Lee. Uh, net liquid value, for example, or net liquidity yeah, value. Net value, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, they're over here. So you could add or subtract those fields. Uh, so let's just yeah. take away, uh, uh, I don't know, we'll take away day trades left. And, you know, we'll add available funds for trading, just to show you how to add something. I think that's already there, but um, available funds for trading. And then remember, you can move these up or down, right? And then we go, okay. And now if you detach this, for instance, if you wanna get more detail, now you can fill this in with whatever you want with all those uh, things you can make it, just so you can customize it and add all these fields, and then you will see them there. So exactly. that's another thing you want to do. All right. The next thing I want to go back to streets, since we're still on this side, uh, I want to go back over to Street Smart Edge. And I'm going to go to one of my layouts that I called the demo here. And I also notice here on Street Smart Edge, I have a news panel. Where is the news panel? Where do I get news on Thinkorswim? Good point, Lee. Yeah, bottom left-hand corner of the gadget window, that plus sign that we clicked on previously, right down there, exactly. There is a live news in there uh, that you can click on, exactly right there. Uh huh. You can get that, um, and uh, you can type in a symbol. Uh, by the way, it can also be linked, something that I know we'll probably go into more detail on if, it, if you want to keep it to a particular uh, symbol. For example, this is just going to give us like world news, actually, uh -huh. especially after hours. Uh, but you could type in a, a stock symbol to get it. If that stock symbol was linked, just using that chain there, and mm -hmm. it was linked to whatever's in the trade tab, then you would automatically have live news based on whatever symbol you've got automatically showing up there for you with whatever color you're using. I tend to use a lot of reds in mine, but you know whatever you might have, whatever anybody's right. got, you know it would be there. So that's a great tool. One more thing too, Lee, uh, if you click on it, so that's really awesome. I mean, by the way, if you click on the news itself, uh, it will open it up and provide, you might need to double click, sorry. I think it's a dot. Uh, yeah, I did. It, it, it just oh. puts it on my other monitor. There. Oh, the monitor. There, got there. it. Yeah. So you can get to that. Uh, there will be like some TV segments in there that you'll be able to see. It will just have different icons on the left-hand side. And just another mm -hmm. quick note, speaking of TVs, because uh, that's also a form of news. Bottom left-hand corner, exactly as you click this. I noticed this is one of your original ones that you had up. Mm -hmm. and you have Trader TV that be, can be selected. And you can see there's a drop down there of other news stations. You can take a look at uh, commercial free uh, where it said Schwab Network. Yeah, you can click on that. And then, um, yeah. Okay, wait, 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 uh, let me, I got to put that up there again. Let me take this yeah, away. Yeah. By the way, you can just use the arrow down in the bottom corner. There you go. That one do it too. Yep. But where it says okay, Schwab Network. A uh, in the right. little box right there. And then uh -huh. you can also do, just like on CNBC on uh, Street Smart Edge, you still have access to the same thing, but you also have a bit more as well. 
have they the short sure network do. now and all of that. So they sure do. And that and that same icon, Lee, that hamburger shaped icon, this might be something that a trader investor may want to just detach and put on a separate screen and just have uh commercial free news source in that respect showing up as well. Right. Okay. Uh, the the next thing we need to go over is let's go over we talked about this just in general can you just give us a little bit of uh quick things on what each of these tabs does and and then what we're going to do is um show you when we do the tabs just some basic functions of where they are on street smart edge and where they are here so so let's let's start so what's the monitor tab yeah, so the monitor tab, Lee, and again, you've got the key tab up top. It's broken down into sub tabs just below. And you can see right there, we've got activity and positions highlighted number one. And that just tells us, hey, you know, what's out there. Uh, it could be very helpful for working orders. If somebody has a stop loss order, you can just click on the working orders exactly. And you do have some of those, like, for example, in this yeah. paper account, right? <laughs> you can oh, adjust. Yeah, this, is, yeah, this is a special demo account. What we're going to do once we go through these, I just wanted to have some positions in here so we can show then we're going to log out log in the uh paper money when we actually do our trade gotcha okay perfect so that's positions and statements you got filled orders and then as you mentioned lee it shows all your positions with different columns down below now where you mm -hmm. uh that account statement that you were uh, just to the right this is really helpful too because the account statement does give us big picture items to take a look at in terms of hey what's been my trade history over a set period of time uh, that's such a helpful tool and you'll get uh, the days that you can count back from just up top there and you can plug a symbol in as well or just all trades but just to the left of that box where it says one day back mm -hmm. uh, yeah you can go there and you can go back as far as 370 days back so quite a ways back and I, that's what I normally do is just put in that uh, days section there and that will give you your trade history. It'll also give you your your uh, cash balances or dividends paid or whatever the case might be. You'll have uh, sort of that uh, register to see what account changes have occurred. And that would be on uh, the top line one if you wanted to ever select that. Mm -hmm. So some good functions yeah. there. Yeah. And then if you wanted to show by symbol, you could put the symbol in there. Perfect. Yep. Yeah, so this is where we get all our account information. Uh, we're going to go to the trade tab once we go to uh, paper money. Um, but just real quickly, let's let's cover charts really quickly. So let's go again. We're going to do much more on charts right. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But let's go to Street Smart Edge, and the first thing we notice is on Street Smart Edge charts, you can have tabs. Where you can have like different time frames and everything like that. Now, if we go to a Street Smart uh, Think or Swim chart, okay, we don't have those kind of tabs, but you can do the same thing with this grid thing here. Why don't you tell me about that? Maybe, why don't maybe I wanted a, a daily chart and on the same screen, I also on Street Smart Edge, I would have a separate tab for like a five minute chart. But how would I get multiple charts here on this chart tab? How do I do that? Yeah, excellent uh, question. In fact, it's such a cool tool here too, but just the box, it's, it's funny, it's right above patterns there. Yeah, just that box, you can see it is just like a one screen box. You can see you can really knock yourself out too with a number of screens and those could be all different sorts of monitors or different uh, charts themselves. But if we were to do, let's say a side by side, Lee, if we just chose, uh -huh. if we just move over to two, it'll automatically fill that in and boom, you've got, uh, a, a stock or a, a chart set up here that could have two different stocks, different time frames, for example, one that I've clearly used myself in the past. So we could throw a symbol in here too and set this up. Now, as you mentioned, Lee, I know we're going to do many more details on breaking this down. In fact, we'll have a way to set up a different study type too, because you can save studies and throw those in very, very quickly right. as you go right. through them. Uh, so let's just just as a just a threshold matter really quick, as I said, we're going to do charting in very much detail tomorrow. But just one thing, I mean, people might want it right from the beginning to put things on charts on Street Smart Edge. You right click and then, you know, if you want to uh, add a study, you do it this way. 
you know, add overlays, you can do that from right clicking. It's a little different on, on thinkorswim. Uh, let's, let's go back to just a, a one chart here and just show me how I actually set the chart up as far as time frames and add a quick study. And, just, and how to set the style, maybe. I have candlesticks. Just go over those basic things that you do with a right click on Street Smart Edge. Oh, for sure. Okay, and there are a few different ways to do it, but a common way is is just using those icons just above the chart itself, Lee. Yeah, exactly. Just to the right of that wheel, uh, we have D, which stands for a daily time frame, which you've got. So this is just a good quick way to set up a time frame. That could, by, by the way, also be saved as a grid, as we just mentioned, too. Those are interchangeable. But just mm -hmm. exactly, you can customize time frames. What's really nice here is it does go back to uh, is all the data, and that can go back several decades too, or intraday time frames. But those can be customized, so you can set this up. But that is where you'd find those, and there is uh, a way to get after hours charts as well for people that like to look at that. Okay, uh, exactly. There's your time frame. So yeah, just and you can yeah. You know, go ahead. You can set it here, and you can whatever. If you set time frames, you can save them as favorites. That's why I have these here. So you can set your common time frames. Once you set them here, you can save them as a favorite. So, and then they show up here. Yes, exactly. Another really common uh, tool here to be used is just to the left of uh, that periodicity where you clicked on D is the wheel. And the wheel will enable us to make changes like we've seen before. It's it's instead of settings like we showed earlier, this is just chart settings. And so it's got general indications here, a number of tabs that run across the top. Exactly, you got the price axis, uh, the time axis or you know, uh, the X axis and different adjustments that can be made more on this uh, tomorrow. But here are the appearances. Yes. Right. So th this is how you would you would change, you know, if you wanted a, a different background on your chart, you could set it here. If you wanted a white background, something like that. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. So you, you can you can do that. I'm going to keep it as as dark for right now. But we wanted to make, make yeah. sure to go over that. For sure. OK. Um, th the next thing is. What we want to do is show. How to go into paper money. Because when we did the login, we had two choices. So I'm going to close this, and then we're going to relaunch it. Because for our next set of demonstrations, we want to be in paper money. So I'm once again, I'm going to launch it on a separate screen. Exactly, Lee. And you know, it's interesting because with paper money and with this with being software, you have to decide if you want to what you want to log into initially, right? It's either got to be live right. or paper because it's loading up right. that software. Here's live, and here we're gonna. This is how you go paper. You click on paper down here, and that's what we're gonna do next. So once again, I'm just gonna log into the paper money side of the account that we were on. So I'm gonna type in the long user ID again. <laughs> and I'm gonna do the long password. Yeah, and while you're doing that, Lee, one thing that is kind of nice too is that you know once you do log into it, it, it forces you to sign back into Paper, for example, or Live if you want it. So in other in other words, it'd be tricky to kind of mess it up. Um, you know, if you think you're placing a Paper trade, well, I mean, you signed into Paper Trade and you can't right. go to Live Trade unless you sign out, type thing. That, that's a good uh, safety issue there. I typed yeah. in the type in the. Uh... Password again. Oh, you bet. You bet. And again, it's just loading all the settings too. So it takes a little bit to load up and it will remember, you know, as long as we have it saved, like we'd shown earlier, you know, what is going to be popping up. It will be the last thing we had the last time we were in, which is generally people like to have their own routines, Lee, and that's very helpful. Right. So I'm going to pull this over now. So now we are in paper money. You know that because it says at the upper right, paper money simulated trading mm -hmm, exactly. okay so uh what we're going to do now uh we're trying to give the last uh 20 minutes or so for uh questions that needs demonstrations like how to put a couple studies on the chart so i, I see a couple of those so we're going to do that in the question period but now just to show you some of the trading functions what we're going to do is we're going to go over to street smart edge again and the first thing is we have Screener Plus 
in here is how you do a scan on um, uh, let me just this is how you do a, a scan on you know you just choose the things that you want I, we're all familiar with three smart ads so I'm not going to show you but I just wanted to you know this is how you do the scans on um, Street Smart Edge, and then the tool on Thinkorswim that does the scans is called the Scan Tool. And what we did here is we have different filters. Now, I will say that the scanning is much more robust on Thinkorswim than it is on Street Smart Edge, and and we're going to go over that in more detail probably tomorrow, but. Just know we're just looking for a stock so we can trade it. And what we've done is we've just added a couple. When you first sign on to it, you'll have these stock filters and you can choose what you want on these. So what I just chose was a PE between 10 and 30. Then I chose stocks with a yield between 2 and 7%. And then again, from the drop down, I chose market cap. It's in millions, so uh, a thousand million is a billion. And then we just hit the scan key, and then we get all the stocks that meet that criteria. So uh, let us work with Verizon. So one thing, let's go to a chart on Verizon real quick. And then we're going to, because you're going to show me how to do a trade both from the chart and both from the trade tab. So we're going to go to the charts and put in Verizon. And again, you could link it. All right, so there is Verizon. So let's say that I want to buy this. How do I do that? Go over the different ways I can place a simple stock sure. trade. Surely, yeah. So um, a couple of different ways. There is, you know, getting back to that right-click functionality, that is one way to do it. You know, Mac or PC, you're going to get a buy sell. You're going to get a buy custom, a sell custom down there that can be created. And that is one way to quickly do it. And, and actually to pull up an order that's going to show up and see you can do that with, like as it states there, an OCO bracket or other orders uh, that could be listed if somebody wants to put like a potential exit place uh, on right. the trade as well, right? Uh, right. So, uh, uh -huh. yeah. So let's, let's do that because if we go back over to Street Smart uh, Edge, you know, we you can do what are the, as we open up a trade window here. OK, you can do those brackets. That's how we do brackets on Street Smart Edge. And you're telling me and we'll do a bracket trade on this that you're telling me that I can do a bracket right from the chart if I want. That's absolutely right. That is one place to do it. Yep, that's right. Okay, I could do it there. Or uh -huh. how else could I place a trade? Because there's a trade tab. Can you tell me a little bit about that? The trade tab? Sure. Yeah. So the trade tab designed specifically for you won't believe this for trades. OK, <laughs> so it's uh, it's pretty easy to follow there. Exactly. And you got as I can see here, you know, you've got an option chain listed within the trade tab. You got the underlying up top. You got options down below. Just look at mm -hmm. that. Uh, the underlying. I know you were looking at that, Lee, uh, initially. You got the bid and the ask price there. Uh, mm -hmm. It's designed right up top. And we could either do this. This too. We could either left click or right click to pull up that same set of orders. Uh, let's say, for example, an OCO bracket or a stop order uh, or, you know, a potential exit place on that as well. The, the so I could, right, I could right click mm -hmm. on that and do it again, get the bracket that way. Sure could. Uh, yes. Or if I didn't want to do a bracket, if I remember, you told me that I can just also just click on the ask or the bid and it'll bring up a trade too. For sure. Yes, it will. Right down below in color coded, too. So green, you know, meaning a buy and you can see those orders under the order entry. Uh, it will show some additional information down below about existing orders and things like that. But that right there is that that main line. Perfect. Shut right that in here. Down. Yeah. And there's your default, by the way, Lee, that we talked about earlier. 100 shares shows up right there. As somebody as you set it up as a default there. OK. All right. So. Um, way to do it. Mm -hmm. Yep. So let us get to this from the chart because a lot of people, you know, on Street Smart Edge, if we go back to the, the charts over there, right, you, you know, you, you, you can trade right there, buy or sell. And we're going to do it 
right from the here and we're going to do a a bracket and we're going to show you how that shows up here so we're going to go with oco bracket and it actually pulls up that bracket for me down here so why don't we um by let's see let's just make and get a little bit more here on the uh order quantity here mm -hmm. and so you're adjusting those columns too you can just drag and drop those over that. yep all right so maybe we want to do a hundred shares so i would type in the quantity or it would show up if i did it also with the default and then uh, maybe we just want to buy that uh you know at the market tomorrow because yeah. the market is closed now you, and yeah go ahead oh no i was gonna say it linked up perfectly so yeah. I, I just realized right above that quantity as long as those links are on there it'll flip it to 100 on those others so everything makes right. sense in terms of the brackets you got it you know right and if you don't have that on you could you know you could do maybe only a half a position or something right. you could change it Precisely. okay so to do the bracket then um yeah. we will do uh for the limit our profit so the stock is trading at 41 maybe if it gets up to 53 we want to sell it for a profit and that would be good till cancel so we go here under the timing and we can make all those we don't want to do that but we could if we wanted everything to be good till canceled we can just click that little link right but we're going to do day on that do good till cancels here we'll put our price in at 53. Perfect. so you just type in there yeah the typing's so easy it, easier otherwise it might just go in penny increments using those plus yeah exactly so, exactly yeah. Sure, and we'll there. make that good to can and maybe we would risk i don't know maybe we would you know feel that it might be going the wrong way if it takes out this little area of support here at 38. So we could have our stop maybe at 38. Again, not a recommendation, just showing you right. the trade yeah. here at 38. Yeah, no guarantee for fills on stop orders and stuff like that, but uh, just potential exit areas. And then, like you said, Lee, yeah, good to cancel on that as well. And that's so important, right? Because right. otherwise, if, you, if that just stays day, then <laughs> you think you have that stop order out there and darn it, you don't. Yeah. All right. All right. So now we hit confirm and send. Mm -hmm. And it'll give us things that we need to read. So it shows us our buy is in green, which is nice. Our sells are in red, which is nice. It says we're going to buy this. And then if that fills, we'll have these orders in here. One will cancel the other on the stop. It's just telling us that we don't know exactly what we're going to get on the stop. And because it's the activation price we get a market order and then we would send the order all right so now on street smart edge i would go to the uh account box which i'm going to pull up here well we have a place on the account on Street Smart Edge where you look for order status is what I wanted to show. Um, how do I get the order status on that one I just placed? Yeah, the one you just placed. It's really cool, too, because I love how you led us right into this area here, Lee, on the charts, because you'll notice there's something very interesting here. We have the order showing up on the charts just exactly as you said it, and these are movable. If right. any time we wanted to close out the order, there's an X there. If you wanted to adjust the stop, it's just simply a drag and drop, just left mouse button, right? Pull it down and adjust yeah. it there. And you can visually see where your stops are and close those out. And by the way, Lee, it's really helpful too. Sometimes if you say, do I have a stop on this stock or do I have yeah. a target? Shoot, just pull up the uh, the trade tab and you'll see if, you, if you've got one on there because it'll visually show it for you too. as well and uh we also mentioned too under the monitor tab you can also check remember that was yeah just initially everybody as we looked and lee had pointed this out under activity and positions boom your working orders right there there it is i mean you've got it you got the fill they can be adjusted from here as well not as easy as the chart but you could still right click on uh one of those orders that you wanted to adjust for example and either cancel replace or just cancel it all together or the group you know because it wasn't linked 
uh, trade. So like the platform, and we've said, Lee, and you and I have talked about this, but there's more than one way to to accomplish things. It's right. kind of like it just provides you, you know, an ability to do it in a way that you'd prefer. You sort of uh, tailor it to how you would adjust a stop or where to find a stop in the first place. I think a lot of people spend you know, a majority of time in the charts tab, but not everybody. They like to reference it on the trade tab as well. All right. And then one last thing for today, just real quick, before we um, see if there's any questions that we need to demonstrate. Uh, and what we will do is um, if we go here to the trade tab on Street Smart Edge, and if I want to do options or option chains, I just click on the option chains here and it shows me there. Uh, just show me again where the option chains are on Thinkorswim and let's just show them how to, let's say, buy a call on something just so we cover all the bases here. For so sure. let's yeah. go back over to Thinkorswim and where do I get the option chains again? Yeah, so under the trade tab, right below the underlying, You'll know real quick if a company does have options because there's going to be an option chain that shows up uh, down mm -hmm. below. And a lot of times, too, if there's a lot of those windows open, you can shut those down exactly. Right. So you can see, because sometimes those will be listed there. Uh, just uh, close them down here. Perfect. There we go. Ooh, beautiful. Yep. Now you got it. And there are the options. Uh, and you'll notice over there that we have uh, a set of different columns that might not be exactly what we're after so we can change that layout if we wanted to exactly just as just to see where the bid and ask might come up at and uh, pull those up specifically and we can customize that uh-huh yep. like the ask and we can just type those into a column here and actually save it so we'll just add that in there yeah i think that's the actual the size i'm sorry about size. that it might be the oh, size yeah. which is a little bit different yeah yeah, we'll just do the ask okay. size there. And then um, because also when you click, on, I had this question also, we'll just um, move this up a little bit. You know, how do you get the level two on the options? And all you do is you just go to an option change and you just click on the identifier. And when the market is open, it will open up the level two options in here. So just so you know that. So you do get level two options as well. Oh, and didn't ask on the far right, Lee, sorry. It was over there. All the time. Yeah. You just have all a lot right. So, yeah. mm -hmm. all right. So, what's Verizon trading at? It's trading at 41. Let's say that we wanted to do a May 41 call. Walk me through how I would place that trade. I've got them shown here. So, how am I going to place this option trade? Yeah. And it looks like we just have the call side open as well. A lot of times there can't uh -huh. be the left side and the right side. And that can be adjusted exactly right there if we wanted to. Uh -huh. We could just take and do both uh, call or calls and puts. We could exactly. do both. We'll yeah. just do the call again. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Okay. Do it that way. I think it's great. And then we can just go just like we did before. We can go over to the ask on the 41 strike for that May that you have open there, Lee. And just uh -huh. go all the way to the far right. Where we've got the ask price there, it looks like that's ah. got it adjusted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I just, yeah, and I think just one more. That might be bid. Yeah, and there's there the ask. Perfect. Beautiful. Yep. Precisely. And so I would click on that, and that oh, that brings up a window for me there. It yeah. brings up the option. And by the way, Lee, that has the same functionality as the underlying. We could right click on that if anybody ever wanted to to put a customized order in there too. Just just saying. Yeah. Yep, you can. Do that type of thing right yep. and uh right. we're going to cover tomorrow uh we just want to buy something so it'll show up tomorrow um so we'll just do this at the market tomorrow because we want just want to show how the options are going to show up in the, in the positions too so i'll just make this for a market yeah and then uh my paper money is set for a 10 option default uh, so that's why it popped up with 10 okay and so why don't we do we'll do five we'll yeah, because I remember it was the live one that we made those adjustments right. to initially. Right, it was the live one, right. All right, okay. so I'm going to confirm and send that. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to buy this call uh, to open at the market, which will be tomorrow when the market opens. So we will also go over tomorrow, uh, we're going to go over the account detail window in much more detail. We're going to go over to the charting 
in much more detail. We're going to go into the trading in much more detail, how to do like, uh, you know, different types of option trades and um, all that spreads and all of that. So uh, we just wanted to show you a simple trade today. And so our, our presenting time is up. Uh, ben has sent in some uh, questions that need to be demonstrated. And the first is, how do you add a 20 and 50 day moving average to the chart? Okay, let's go to the charts. And let's put in a different symbol. Put in Microsoft. Okay. We don't have all the other stuff in there. All right, if I want to put on, walk me through the easiest way to put on a couple of moving averages. Couple of moving averages, Lee. The best way, you know, if you know the name of the indicator, there are, like we said, more than one way to do it, but the little dropper or uh, flask, whatever icon you have just to the left of the wheel there, exactly. When, anytime you know the name of it, it's so easy because there's a huge list and that list has gotten bigger over the years. But <laughs> there you go. Simple moving average. And, and you'll learn that it's just like Lee has got it, S I M P. Right, can, and, I, yeah. and our client wanted to do two of them, so we'll bring mm -hmm. two of them over. Perfect. But now, tell me how we don't want nine periods. The client wants a 20 and a 50 period. So how do I do that? Okay, so what we want to do is just look for the exact same thing we had in other portions of the site, and that's the wheel. If we just click on the wheel, it will give us uh, some functionality there to make some changes, because you're right, the default there is nine-ly. And so we can take a look at the length up top, and we can make that 20. Right. And then we can also, just like we can on Street Smart Edge, we can, you know, choose the line style. Maybe we want this one to be dotted. Maybe you want the 20. You can choose the color. There's also a custom palette in here if you wanted to do that. We'll just make it orange. All right. So we've done that one. And then let's make this other one a 50. Let's see if I remember what you told me. Okay. I click here. I change the length here. And then again, well, I'm gonna make that a little bit, well, and I'm gonna make that a, a darker color. I'm gonna make that kind of purple. And I hit okay. And now I will hit apply and they should show up on my chart. And there they are, there's one. And um, why wanna get the other one here? Oh, because I, let's see. Yeah, it's it's just hard to see. I think the width on it's there, but yeah. you nailed it. You got it, though, Lee. Yeah, yeah it's there. Yeah. Okay. Um, just maybe zoom in on it, too, um, to take a look at it. There they are. There they are. So here. See, I told you you were a genius. The, I know. <laughs> you got it perfect. <laughs> there you go. And uh, we're going to talk more about zooming in and everything uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh, so I'm, let's see. Okay, um, we wanted to show how to put, where's the settings to put the trades on the, on the charts? We have a question on that, and also uh, to show uh, orders on the chart as well. Show me how to do all that, because there's a setting we can do for that too, right? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, so showing orders on the chart. So uh, the orders, so if you wanted to, uh, you can see what, I mean, what you've got open on the chart uh, to put an actual order on the same thing. You know, we could right click on the chart. Uh, that is one approach, right? That we looked at the buy and mm -hmm. sell there functionality, Lee. Mm -hmm. The one we didn't talk about just to kind of explain another one is off the, to the far right hand side. We could actually call it like a left a right hand column uh, running down the list, which is called active trader uh, on the far, far right side. Exactly right there. And that's another way. Uh, hard to miss this one, Lee, you know, get the buy market, sell market buttons. Uh, and that's why, by the way, those can also be adjusted to limit orders, et cetera, in the little wheel too, uh, to the right of that box. So that section can be tailored to whatever anybody wants. Exactly right there. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Cool. All right. I'm going to get rid of this. Yeah, we could just click on it. Just take it off. Got it. Take yeah. it off. The, the other thing is... Um, the in the things here you can uh put in here you know what you want to show on the chart as well you can show options on the chart right you yes. can show um 
if you want orders and everything, is that under general? Where, where do I say I want the orders to show, yeah, show trades? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can do that as well. Yes. So you, so in the settings here, you can do all that type of thing as well. And uh, the data box, if you want that, that's on Street Smart Edge as well. If we did floating data box, you know, then we just hold our cursor over and we get the data. And not only do we get the price data, we get all the we get all the data on the indicators too as well. And then it's, of course so you get you, time saving. Yeah. Yeah, it is so time saving. And you can just do that too. So uh yeah, display orders on chart from the equities sub tab. Again, we'll do that to show show where that is, the equities sub tab, show corporate actions. And show Oops. options right there. Yep. Yeah. Show options. Which is another great place to go um, as well to show yep. um, all kinds of things on the chart. Yep. As well. Mm hmm. Okay, are there any other questions that need demonstration because our time is almost up? One thing too, Lee, I was just going to state uh, while we're waiting to see if any additional questions come in on the right hand sidebar there, you can see that we have news a lot of times on the very bottom. Some traders might like to actually access news on a given stock uh, just right from the chart. And uh, that puts a little box at the bottom of the screen too, as well. Um, that would show me how to do that. Show me how to do that. Sure, sure. On the far right hand side, it was just below uh, Active Trader, kind of towards the bottom there, uh, right at the bottom. Yeah, I guess right at the bottom. There you go. So then you get news on the chart because um, a lot of people spend a lot of time in the charts, and that's one yeah. way to do it. Uh, yeah, so you can. Yes, yep. specific news to that stock, and then just above that, as a side note. Well, you get level two. And I know we had a question on level two that would show up on the uh, in the gadgets window. Of course, you can get this here. You can get it right there, too. too. Yes. Right, chart two. Exactly. Which you can't do on a Street Smart Ed charge to get level two. Um, totally true. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one last thing, Lee, I'll just say on that, on the very top, one last way to trade on the chart there's a trade tab above uh, active market and that would just keep the buy and sell above the chart uh above the active trader there just up a couple of uh on the far right there you go yeah it just keeps the buy and sell up top is a a quick a quick uh way to get to it good yeah. can i show an option contact on the chart uh an options uh, like an options uh chart itself yeah, I think. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah so we to do that. I think we had a question on that. Yeah, this is a really cool feature, too, because a lot of times options, people want to see what that option chart looks like. Actually, under the trade tab there, Lee, uh, if we choose, let's see. Yeah, I guess Microsoft would be a good example, one that has a lot of volume associated with it, perhaps, uh, uh, or open interest. So you get kind yeah. of a chart. There we go. But if we just like right click on, let's say, for example, that option there. Mm -hmm. Uh, we can actually say copy uh, the symbol. It's uh, third section down just a little bit for there you go. So that copies and I see that's that's why it's so helpful to get that symbol because that, that symbol is long. Right. Then we go to the chart and we would paste yep. it in here. You got it. Control V uh, PC or command V on a Mac would do that. And there's your option chart. All right. So anytime there's that data th flowing through, we can, you know, it'll it'll pull up a chart there, which is nice. And sometimes people say you talked about detach it too. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you can detach it as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we have another question on performance by sectors. Yes, let's show that one. So let's go over to Street Smart Edge. Mm -hmm. And we do have uh, we get the I just wiped it out for us. I'll get it back. Get the uh, screen plus here, performance by sector. All right, now we can definitely have that and we can do sector action on thinkorswim too. Why don't you show me guys one of our pre-built lists. You could either do it on the, uh, the market watch tab or you could do it on the, let's show them how to get that sector 
information here, for instance, in the watch list. So show me how to do that, because there is a pre-built one, right? Uh, there, there sure is, Lee. Yeah. So if we wanted to even just use that existing one exactly right there and just click on that, go down to the public folder. I think it's might be the bottom one, uh, the public folder. And these are pre-built, like you mentioned. And then just sectors, and uh, sectors there's indices and industries combined. Yeah. Uh, so, you get all of it. Yeah, you get all of it. Yeah. So if we uh, let's go and uh, just get the sectors first. Okay. Sir. So we'll do uh, yeah, public S's sector indices. There we go. And what's interesting also is if we and you could put in obviously you don't know what these symbols are, so you would put in the description here. Now you customize and put in the description. Right. Precisely, we could put that in there. Yeah. Um, if you wanted a quick reference to it, and then we could maybe even link it so we could see it on charts too. If somebody yeah, exactly. Somebody. So what you you can't really do this on Street Smart Edge, but what you can do is link. We'll go to our chart tab, and we'll make it one, and then we'll make this one, and then, for instance, uh, let's just show the. So if you want to see the energy sector. You can actually get a chart of the sectors, which you can't do on Thinkorswim. I mean, which you can't do on Street Smart Edge. So, and then you can do the same thing with industries. You can chart the industries, which you can't. You can get the drop down on Thinkers on uh, Street Smart Edge, but you can't actually chart them. And you yeah. can here. It's so nicely it, it, that approach that you just brought up because you can either just click, 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 or hit enter. A lot of I know a lot of traders out there just like to hey see a number of stocks that are showing up in the S and P five hundred or you, as you mentioned or showed right here to just to show what the sectors are doing, you know, and uh -huh. they can go through it quickly at a quick glance. They can have a, a screen with a number of different charts on it as you showed with different periodicities uh -huh. as in the grid grid chat. Uh, grid charts. Of course, we're going to go into that in more detail, but uh, you, you showed an outline of it tonight, how to, how that's possible. Right. Uh, we have a question. Street Smart Edge, I can see the top 10 gainers and decliners. That's a pre-built watch list too, is it not on Street Smart Edge? It, I mean, I know. <laughs> I think as well. well. I was going to say, well, I'd want to ask you that question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting tired here. Yeah, so that's a, uh, yes. why don't you show me where that one is? That's one of the public ones too. Yeah, it's right below public. It's just the lovers and losers, my friend. And you know which one means which, right? Mm -hmm. get movers and losers. I think that's what they were asking. You get upgrades and downgrades from a brokerage firm as well. Was that was it the question or was it the top no, 10? No, it was, it was the top 10. Here are all the top 10s okay. right in here. I just so wanted to feel lovers and losers. All right. Yeah, that's a good one. But if you want to know the top 10 yeah. losers and gainers, all okay. that is right yeah. in here. So nice. And then it'll just show you. So there's there's hundreds of pre-built watch lists that you know you only had some in Street Smart Edge. You can get many more public watch lists with a lot of that information in it. Yeah, well. and, you know it's so cool because you get all that information right there at your fingertips. But the chart is literally just one click away, and click, 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 or enter. You know to pull each one of those up. So once you've found it, you've got it in place. Shoot, you can put in whatever you want and the gainers, lovers and losers, see what the upgrades were in the industry, you know, brokerage wise or downgrades very, very quickly and just get a really good feel of what's been happening in the markets. I mean, just so fast at your fingertips, just as the way you showed us there, Lee. Right. Another thing I want to point out, I mean, uh, yeah, our earning dates easier to find. There wasn't any in Street Smart Edge. That's a big that is a big, uh, oh. uh, yes, a big improvement on Thinkorswim. Uh, if, for instance, let's put in um, Microsoft, and when they announce the new earnings date, you have it right on the chart, 423. Beautiful. See, down there. And you can also have that. That would show up in a watch list column if you wanted it to as well, right? That's right. Lee. In fact, you know, one way that I do too, just to kind of get a sense of everything that's being announced during a whole month, just hit the market watch. We just go to the market watch tab, key tab, market watch, sub tab, uh, calendar. Um, exactly the far right there. And it will give you, based upon what you've selected on the left-hand side in those check boxes, you know, is it just earnings only? 
Well, if you just want earnings only, you can do that. You can look at splits. You can, yeah, you can just show earnings, earnings, earnings yeah, or just earnings, earnings only. Earnings. Yeah. Or dividends. Yeah. And, and that was for the weekly. What I do is that the month upper right hand corner, we can get into more of this later, but just to help answer that question more fully, exactly right there. And then whatever you click, you'll see what's on any one of those. And then it gives you a breakdown down below what the estimates are for earnings, uh, et cetera. On down yeah, we'll do it in some, I don't think it'll do it in paper money, will it? Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. If we chose, let's see, what can we choose? Like, let's say, for example, the second. Oh, if you click on the second there. Uh, number the second? Two. Yeah, just above, in the calendar, just above um, or to the right. Yeah, like exactly like a date that we've passed, for example. Like, the day we passed. Okay. So. Like the Tuesday, the second, just one more over to the right. There you go. If you click on that, it should automatically update down below what those numbers yeah, there were. You go. Okay, there you go. EPS, yep. Estimates and actual. Right. Good. Except for some of those funny it's, symbols that didn't get a number yeah. fed through. Right. Yeah. Very good. The, the press release is off to the right as well. So it's a lot of great information just right there, too. Yep. Uh, let's see. We only have a couple more minutes. Let's just see if there's any other question. Now, there is a block trade industry. Uh, a couple of things that aren't coming over, I have to admit, on uh, Street Smart Edge to Toss. There is not a, is there a block trade indicator on Thinkorswim? Uh, size wise, there, there is additional information Lee, on the uh, trade tab. Right. You can actually go under the trade tab and then whatever you know, company we might have up. You have to scroll to the very, very bottom. Okay. And there's going to be um, actually statistics that are listed down there. Uh, now we will get, oh, okay, so this is specific to options, but we can get block trades there. I'm going to show you another place to get block trades too throughout the day. That's really yeah, interesting. Like, that. example, yeah, but okay, sure. So it's a gadget window actually. So okay. go back exactly plus sign right there and uh, one place to get it. Now there is the time and sales. I'm not going to take you there, but some people can scroll up and down through the time and sales to find one. There's actually mm -hmm. also this feature that's really interesting. It's called trade flash just right, right below it too. And uh, if you click on trade flash, Oh, you know what? It's not in the, uh, it's gotta be in the live account <laughs> or uh, I'm on the live demo is what I should say. Oh. All uh, right. Uh, well, I, well we got a couple minutes. So let me let me log in and because somebody wanted to see that. So let's do that. Okay, cool. And and while you're doing that too, I could just explain a few things so that when you have it pulled up, it, you know, we can I can kind of let them know what what will be in there. Okay, um, good. Yeah, but what as we get into it, it will show, for example, big uh, purchases that have been made. Uh, it'll give it across the board. Um, just it's it's not specific to any stock. It could be any stock out there in the universal, really all stocks, not S and P five hundred or anything. Uh, just yeah, I can't wait it. to show this. Yeah. So let me just log in here for you. Okay, sounds good. By the way, we'll also tell you if you're making specific highs on a stock during a day uh, that's been struggling around resistance. It will tell you how uh, how high that stock has been on the day too. It'll give you a percentage. So there's a lot of really interesting uh, information there. Uh, mainly, though, tying into your your initial point from the from the client, it's it's really ties into the block trades. Most of it, there, Lee. Um, but yeah, yeah, so we'll log in here in a sec. Sure. All right. So now we can go to the gadget and look at Trade Flash. Yes. And there's all sorts of stuff in here. You're going to see. Big delta trades, you'll see block trades, right? Yep. Stocks hitting highs. Exactly. There's a big so, sell block. Mm -hmm. Yeah, big sell. So this is actually a little bit stronger than you see um, on Street Smart Edge. Oh, really? And then, by the way, that's, that's interesting. But stocks and options, too. You'll see yeah, that, that's seen a lot of options, but there's, yeah, well, delta trade, as you pointed out. Yeah. 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 So there's all sorts of things in here. Yeah, and that can be also adjusted. Just as a side note, you can see that little just to the to the left of the hamburger icon. We've been calling it the hamburger icon. It's not an official term. Exactly. You can select categories. So if you just wanted to see like trade flash insights, and those are kind of going to be the bigger orders, that would be right. showing up there. If that was the only one, uh, if it was just option trades, boom, you got that. So there is a way to categorize it as well. Right. So if you just want to see large equity trades, which was the question, block trades. Yep, you nailed it. That's the one. Mm -hmm. It'll start streaming it in there, just like the uh, block trade on uh, Street Smart Edge. 
Yes. And with that, so our time is up. Boy, it went fast, even though it was an hour and a half. So we want to thank you all for your kind attention. Um, also, just know that there are plenty of resources available for you beside these. Uh, you can go to our YouTube page, which is just uh, let me pull that up for you. We have a lot of videos that you can watch. Oh, let me pull up the YouTube page here. So we're going to go to Google. I mean, Chrome, rather. I just want to show you how to pull up our YouTube page if you're not familiar with it. And here it is. And then there's many resources for you in here. As a matter of fact, you can see, I want to Street Smart Edge to Thinkorswim Desktop. These are all shorter ones that we've done on different um, concepts. So these are all here. Thinkorswim Web is all here. Uh, you know, getting started with, uh, there's a getting started with uh, Thinkorswim in here too. I forget where that one is, but uh, you can go to playlists and get all of those as well. So just go to our channel. All these resources are here, Street Smart Edge to Think or Swim for Future. There's all sorts of things in here to help you in your transition. We know it's not the easiest thing to transition from platforms, but hopefully today we at least got you oriented. We're going to go into more detail over the next couple of days. So hopefully this was useful to everybody. I want to thank Ben Watson in the chat. I really want to thank Mike for showing me things on Thinkorswim. Actually, I didn't know we're there. I haven't been using it as long as he has, obviously. Uh, so awesome. that's awesome, great. So, yeah, so thanks, everybody, and take care.